Good morning, stampers and crafters. I'm back today. As I promised, I'm going to start showing you some videos on how to use Stampin' Up's new soft pastels. This is new to them. Uh, it's in the catalog. And I will have a link to them in the description below. These are really fun to use. They're fun for quick backgrounds or just to use as a coloring medium. Like I showed you yesterday, there's several different ways to use them. Today, um, I'm going to show you a couple of backgrounds you can do with these that are a lot of fun. And I will, since this may be a little bit lengthy because I'm going to do two cards, if I can figure it out, I will put a time stamp on the um, video below so if you don't want to watch one and you just want to watch the other and I'll try to fast forward through things that you know you don't really need but let's get started let me show you what we're gonna make today our first one is a quick simple sunset rainbow background using these isn't this fun it's quick it's simple it's elegant and we are going to be using techniques that I taught you yesterday I'll put a link to the video I did yesterday showing the different ways that you can use these pastels whether or not you're blending them with your fingers or water or different techniques with them I'll put a link to that below but let's get started and I'm gonna start on this one first and then I will sneak peek you to the second one. You're not going to... Okay, I can't stand it. i got to show you what the second one's going to be. We are going to make this on the second one. This one takes a, just a tad longer, but I've got a couple of techniques in, in this one using these that we're going to combine to come up with this. So stay tuned. I'll try to timestamp that if you're not interested in the first one and vice versa let's get started so all I'm going to use is I'm going to use our regular basic white and I've got this cut at four by five and a quarter because I'm I, I don't want to do a lot of a lot to this I want the picture itself to be the focal part of my card so let's get started so let me set this aside here now something I do with these pastels, because you may have others. Um, I got some emails from people after yesterday's video that, you know, they've inherited some pastels and they never knew how to use them. Well, what I found with my pastels is I make myself little color cheat sheets with them because when you look at them, you know, you're kind of like, oh, okay, yeah, that's what it is. But when you do them on black versus on white, they do come out a little different. So make yourself little cheat sheets before you start. It, it's just a little helpful tip. I mean, that's what I do. And I'll do one on white or I'll do one on, on black or both, and I keep them on hand. My other pastels, which have been put away for years, and I'm not even sure where they are, I used to just keep the cheat sheets with the pastels okay just a little tip all right so let's get started we are going to bring out our poppy parade we're pretty much almost going to use them all here and now the this yellow this daffodil and this mango are really close okay and like I said if you do a sample you you know which ones are which okay so we've got these let's pull out the granny apple we're gonna bring in a little bit of the knight of navy and we're just gonna add a touch of the purple at the bottom so let's get started so like i showed you yesterday for large areas you can just use the side of your pastel to cover larger areas or you could just you know color it on there you just want to get some color down so 
So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to get some color down. And like I said, make sure you have a, something um, to catch all the dust and things. that these, these do create a dust, the pigment. Okay, so I'm going to bring that down just a little bit. Then I'm going to bring in my mango. I'm going to go right into it. It's not going to hurt it. So we're going to blend them together anyway. And I try to make sure I have plenty on there. Let's bring in our daffodil. Remember yesterday I told you I usually keep a little brush for dusting. So I just kind of keep it there to keep some of it out of my hands and work area. Let's add a little bit of granny apple green in here. If you go the same direction it's, it's a little easier to blend. That's why I'm trying to go. Because I just want a smooth blend of colors. So I'm trying to stay the same direction. Let's add a little bit of this Knight of Navy. Just a little and I wanted a little touch of purple on the horizon I'm gonna add that in here now when you're doing this many colors together um, I'm gonna pick up this dust a little bit just so I don't stick my hand in it I keep a little damp baby wipe close by just kind of wipe my fingers off or wipe dust up now i'm just going to do use a sponge this is the easiest way you can use a sponge um some people use uh i used to use you know those foam pieces that are dense that your husband wraps around pipes in the winter those work great too but this is this works great now when I'm doing this, I want to go from the top to the bottom because if I go up this way, some of the powder from here can go up that way. So all I'm going to do is just blend it in, blend it together. Just go straight down the page. I'm just doing little tiny circle motions to blend it. Okay, tap that off. Now I want a little more color, so I'm just going to, you can go right over it. This works, these work really great for base, you know, your base backgrounds. You can use them subtle or, but I want this to be just the focal, so I want it to be nice and vibrant. Go right up into that poppy. Because you'll kind of get an, your secondary color there. So we'll bring our yellow. Bring in our granny apple again. I'm not going all the way down because I'm I'm going to be putting a, a mountain range there. Let's 
bring our sponge in again. And I'm just smoothing out that color. And see, by overlapping, you do end up with your secondary color when you mix them. Okay, that looks fabulous. Okay, let's move our spot here. Now, to create the mountainscape, all I did is I took my black Stampin' Right marker, and I'm just going to use the feather tip, and let's just kind of create our mountain range there. And we're just going to color it in. You can use your ink or a marker. Or you can cut a piece of paper on there if you want. Lay it on there. But this is just as fast and simple. Now, and I'm going to wipe off my tip just in case it picked up some of the powder. Let's bring in our Stamparatus. And we'll use our regular Memento ink. And for the stamp set, I'm going to use the Evergreen Ele Elegance. I'm going to use this pine tree right here. And I'm going to put it, let's put it about, let's put it right there. We're, um, we don't want them all the same height. We kind of want randomness there. And while I'm looking at this, I'm going to take my sponge just a little bit. You probably can't see it, but I wanted to make sure those, those lines were blended well. This makes just a really colorful and fun background. I'm going to ink up our stamp really well. I'm going to stamp it a second time. I want a nice dark image. It's a sunset and our trees in the foreground are all in shadow. Okay. And let's move our tree over a little bit. Let's do it just a little bit shorter but slightly overlapping. Again, we'll stamp it again. So as you can see, this is a pretty quick and simple card. I'm going to do a short one on the edge. sure you wipe off your stamp before you try to move it so you don't get ink where you don't want it. Let's do a taller one there. I love these pine trees in this set. And they, they work for, you know, even though the set is kind of a 
Christmas set. They work for anything. You could probably even, you know, black emboss these if you wanted to. I'm going to do one more small tree. So it looks like it's in the background there. I don't want to cover all of my purple. Because I kind of want that little purple sunset thing going on there. Perfect. Beautimus. Okay. Now, you can um, stamp your greeting right on here if you want. Or, um, I stamped my greeting and um, on vellum using stays on. Okay. Um, or you can black emboss it on vellum. Um, when you use stays on it, sticks better i didn't want something that was going to take away from my background oh my god our little birds me i know i have little bird stamps you know little tiny bird stamps but i'm just going to draw in a couple birds here you just kind of do a v you can thicken the body just a little And there's your birds. And I dropped mine. You can use your black stamp and write marker to do that. And then just put your greeting. And then I took mine. Oh, we forgot to do our, our inside. I'm doing a black card base. And I took some of our pale um, papaya. Because I think it's it goes really well with this. But I want to carry my design to the inside. So I'm just going to grab my tree again. And I'm just going to put it down here in the corner. And I always stamp my insides before I attach them to the card base. If you're going to put a greeting or something. Just in case. You know if you mess up when you get to the final part that's kind of disappointing. Oops, that, see, that would have needed to be stamped twice. You could even leave the front without a greeting if you wanted to. Just let your image do the talking. There we go. That looks a little better. Okay. Now we'll just attach this to our card base. Let me move the stamper out of sight here. Oop, I forgot my glue. Hold on. A little glue, buddy. I'm just gonna. And the inside I made a little bit smaller than I normally do. I did um, three and three quarter by five so that I had a bigger black base. I gotta get my glue started here. Haven't used it yet this morning. I'll just attach that to the inside. Now this one, I'm actually going to attach it straight down so it ends up just kind of giving our picture a black frame. You could use dimensionals here if you wanted to.
think I'm running out of glue. And there you go. There is your quick, simple, colorful. And like I said, choose which greeting you want. You could uh, bling this up any way you want. Another thing you can do, just I'll show you because it's something I do. I do little tiny things to my cards sometimes. So I'm going to take my white gel marker. And sometimes I'll just add a couple little tiny stars if my marker would go. And just put some little random stars because it is kind of sunset, dusk. And there you go. There's your first background. All right. Now, let's go to the fun one here. All right, we're going to bring it in. This is the girl we're going to do. And what I'm using is the black cardstock. Okay? This is when your cheat sheet comes in good. Okay? The first thing I want to do is get down a few... I'm, I'm kind of doing like a uh, galaxy sky deal. Okay? So I'm going to take some random, let's do some Knight of Navy in here. Let's just be random. We, we want some different color night sky. Let's add a little purple in there. You may not think you see it, but go ahead and overlap it. Given our, we'll work on the ocean later. I'll show you that one. And now, let's take, let's just use our dauber. Let's blend those out a little bit. Okay. Kind of go sideways. Just lightly blend them in there. And remember yesterday, in that video, I showed you my technique for creating a galaxy sky. Okay, we're going to do that. So I brought my nutmeg uh, grinder in. And now when you do this, you're going to need your brighter colors because they're going to, they'll tone themselves down. So let's use some of the bright daffodil. And I'm going to randomly put some different sizes of crumbs on there. Let's go ahead. Let's add a little of this Granny Apple Green in here. Surprisingly, huh? Ooh, I want that big chunk right there. But I don't want it in my ocean, so I'm just going to drop it there. Maybe we'll add, let's go ahead and add some of the orange too, just a little bit. And now we're going to take either our parchment paper or our transfer paper. I'm going to lay it straight down and we're going to press it into the paper. You can use your finger if you want. I just use a something hard. And try not to move your paper, just let it go straight down over that. And they, that way they don't smear. And look at that. You get this fun galaxy sky. Look at that. Isn't that fun? Okay, now we're going to get a little more detailed here. Let's bring in... Now what I used to create the little rock she's sitting on is I brought in a stamp set called After the Storm. Okay, see this cloud right here? Perfect rock. Watch, I'll show you. 
So I'm going to bring that in. We're going to bring in our Stamparatus. And I want to put my rock about here because I'm going to do a little bit of ocean. You know, she's coming up out of the ocean to check out the uh, fireworks. Okay. I'll set her here so you can see. So now the trick to this one is I can't really use my embossing buddy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and Versamark that up, that stamp. Stamp it on there. Okay. Let me move this out of the way so I can show you what I did. So we're going to bring in our white embossing powder. But when I do this, I'm going to be really careful to try to only get embossing powder on the rock and blow. Okay. So I'm lightly just tap it on there. And see there? That's all we want. Okay. Oh, that's funny. I have a dimensional in my white embossing powder. So let's heat set this. Dark and Light Cinnamon Cider uh, Stampin' Blends. Let's go with our light first. And we're just going to color that embossing powder. You can leave a little bit of white there at the bottom and it'll look like waves hitting the bottom of the rock. And since this little cloud had some gaps in it, it gives you some nice little texture to your rock. So now I'm going to bring in the dark and add some dark in here, just randomly. So you know it's not all one color. And she's going to be covering a lot of it, but that's okay. Okay. So we've got our rock. Now we're going to bring our Knight of Navy back in and we're going to create the ocean here so I'm just going to go straight across from here give us some ocean and do some random little kind of waves here I can even add just a touch of purple in there to blend because you know it is highlighting some of the purple out of this guy. And maybe we'll add just a touch of light yellow in there. Now, I'm just going to use a sponge dauber on this one. And I'm going to blend out those little ocean lines we made. And then you can take and use the point... And add any more little extras you want and if you lay it on its side it's kind of gonna drag and leave a little texture okay 
There we go. Now, but I want my ocean to be more like ocean, so I'm going to bring in the, I believe this is Bermuda Bay. I'm going to hit a few highlights in here. Blend it. Now we'll bring in, we will do our accents at the last, okay? Let me make sure I got water all the way to my rock here. Now the fun part, we are going to create fireworks. And we're going to use another technique with the pastels to create these fireworks. What I'm going to do, I'm going to bring my little mat in here, and I'll zoom you in for this part. Let me see if I can zoom us in just a little bit for you. Okay, now, what I use is I have this inexpensive little plastic paint mixing tray. I got it at Michael's for a dollar. You don't need to do that. You can use whatever you have on hand. Then we need our rubbing alcohol because we are going to use these like a paint medium. Okay, so we've got our rubbing alcohol. We've got a paint tray and where's my paintbrush? We need a little paintbrush, okay? Just a little fine tip tape paintbrush. We're going to create paint. So to do that, let me put away the ones I'm not going to be using. We're going to use Poppy. We're going to use Granny Apple Green. We're definitely going to use the um, Daffodil. Let's see what else do we want. Let's go ahead and let's use the Bermuda Bay. I think I used Night and Navy on the first one, but we're going to do Bermuda Bay. So what we want to do is bring in your grinder. Take your pastel and put some crumbs into your paint tray. You don't need a lot. Okay, make sure I've not zoomed you in too far to see what I'm doing here. So I'm going to go ahead and start with my first color. And I'm going to take my rubbing alcohol only so I don't contaminate it. I'm going to put a little bit into the lid. Oops, and spill everywhere. Then I'm going to take my paintbrush, dip it in here. And create my paint. Mix it around. Get a nice consistency. The little crumbs will melt. And you don't need a lot to create these. So I'm going to move this aside so I don't spill it. Now we're going to create our fireworks. So I'm going to put some paint on there and I want to start in the, the middle of my firework. So I'm going to do a couple little dots. Now when you're first putting it on there, you're not really going to see it. As it dries, as the alcohol dries, you'll see the brightness of the pastel. Okay. I'm going to try to zoom in why I paint this. I don't know if I can get it in there that far, but let me see. Okay, so I've got my little paint here. Now I'm going to do, I want the out, I want to do from out in because that'll give you a thinner line. So I'm just going to draw little lines. And you'll see as they dry, and I usually just kind of have to spin my paper. You'll see as they dry that you'll be able to see where you're painting. 
and just add a little bit of alcohol as you need to out of your little lid and then we're just going to do in between each line you just did I'm going to do another one and just keep going outward It's easier for me to paint toward myself, so that's why I spin my paper. So I'm trying to keep my lines fairly thin. And I like that I have my galaxy behind those. See as the alcohol dries how you can see your little marks? When you first put it on there, it's a little difficult to see. But as they dry, then you can see them. Then you make your firework as big as you want. Just keep alternating. As they dry, if you think you have to go back over it, that's fine too. Or if you have to add a little more um, pastel to your tray. Because the alcohol evaporates very quickly. But the good thing I noticed about doing it in a paint mode like this is it doesn't rub off as easily. And I had somebody ask me yesterday about putting sealers or fixatives on your project. And, you know, some of these are really small projects we do as card makers. And yes, you can buy expensive fixatives and all those things to put on it. But you know what I do? I'll show you at the end what I do and if it's blended well enough it's not really gonna rub off a lot but it can okay but on the scale that I use it for card making I don't want to go spend money on real expensive fixative so what I use I'm gonna show you right now I go to the travel section of the grocery store and I buy aerosol hairspray. And I'll show you how to use that at the end. If you want to. Like I said, it's, it's kind of preference. And everybody, you know, I'm sure if I Google it, everybody's got a different opinion about putting fixatives. Some artists don't like to. They rather frame their art and um, put glass over it. Because when you add a fixative or even the hairspray over it, it can darken your project. It'll darken the, the pastel colors. All I'm doing is touching up any that didn't have, that needed to be a little brighter. And let's start on our next one. I'm going to do, let's do the poppy. So I'm just putting some in my tray there. Picking up some of my alcohol, which I'm almost out here. Let me. Yeah, I've got you zoomed in, so all I'm doing is putting alcohol in my lid. And then I pick up my alcohol and then blend my... You don't want to pour too much in there because you don't want it too diluted. You'll have, you'll have brighter, deeper colors 
if you just make it to like a uh, a paint consistency more than a watercolor consistency if that makes sense so let's do a little red one here so we're going to start hopefully i'm still in the camera here See how, how it, as it dries, how it brightens? And I find if you go from the top in, you'll get a little bit thinner toward the centers, which, you know, how fireworks are. It's a fun technique to do on any card. You could do it on your white cards or So you're just alternating and if one is too light just go over it slightly it's kind of fun to watch them transform as they dry to see the, how bright the color is. Okay, we got a little fireworks there. Now, let's do one more color. Let's do a yellow one. And I can speed up the video on this one so you don't have to painstakingly watch me. Okay, there we go. We got our fireworks done. I'm going to rinse off my brush here. I think I put four on my other one, but we're just going to move forward, and I'm going to show you what I did from here. So now we're going to bring, let me zoom back out just a little bit. Now I'm going to bring in my white gel pen again. shaking it up. Mine's a, a acrylic painter is actually what it is. It's like a white gel pen. But it works with all mediums. That's why I use it. Now right at the bottom of my rock here I'm going to add just a little bit of white accent to look like um, water foaming or you know waves. Now we're going to add a couple little white waves. You just want to do a random little, get my painter to get going here. And now I want to add a little bit of accent to my fireworks. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to touch a few of the very tips of these colors with my white pen. You can also use a white colored pencil, okay, and just touch the tips. And all that's going to do is just kind of make it really bold. You want your fireworks to kind of be, 
you know, really a focal point. I mean, I do personally. You could just leave it the way it is if you want. But see how it just makes that firework pop? And all I'm doing is touching the tip of a few of them. This is just a little extra step you can do. Like I said, you, you don't need to do this. I get, I'm one of those people that kind of am very much attention to detail in my paintings or drawings or things I do. I don't know why. My husband calls it OCD crafting. But I don't know. Sometimes just that little extra touch you put on something makes the difference. Now especially watch this blue one pop when I do that. When I do this. Oops. Couldn't get it to come out now. It's just shooting out of here. That's probably about it. Okay, so now we got our fireworks done. You can also, I want to show you a trick. I wish I, oh, I don't know if I have one. You can use a Q-tip to do this. Uh, I don't think I have one on hand. But you can add a couple little stars in here. Just add some little random white dots. And if you want your star to look more like it's glowing take a q-tip and just tap that dot that you did and it'll make it glow i'll do a tutorial on stars at one point but you know all i'm going to do is i'm going to grab the end of one of my brushes and i'm just going to touch it let it smear it there you go okay so now we got our little mermaid let me close this up And the mermaid I got from the Pirates and Mermaids set. Isn't she adorable? And this cute little pirate. And there's the saying, you are so mermazing. So I saved you the trouble of watching me try to fussy cut her. So I colored her with Stampin' Blends. And see this white, because you can't always get all of the dark off. You don't want to set her on there like that. So what you do is you take your black Stampin' Blend. You're going to do two things. First, you're going to color in her background here. You color in that white background. And that way it doesn't stick out so bad. And then something else I do. You know how you sometimes you fussy cut? See the little white edges on there? Those drive me crazy. So what I do is I take my blend and I go right along those edges. And I fill in those edges. But I'm going to show you a trick you should do. Get your feather tip, flip your image over because you don't want to accidentally slip and ruin your image. I take the feather tip of my marker and I just run it along the edge of my cut. 
I do this with almost all my cut images. And for two reasons. One, it gets rid of that white you may have missed. And it also gives your image, that dark edge, gives your image depth. At least in my opinion it does. That's all I did is just go around it and see it got rid of all those white edges on her. Just something I do. And I do want her to have a little glimmer in her eyes. I'm going to take my white pen and I'm going to lightly touch her eyes. So it looks like she's watching the fireworks. And let's bring in some dimensionals. Because we want her to be popped up, sitting on a rock, enjoying the view. I was going to show you that fixative. Now, before I put her on there, I'm going to show you what can happen. Okay, so we've got our image. Okay, if you take your hairspray, shake it up real well, and you have to use the aerosol. If you're going to do it, do it from a distance. Okay, from like as far back as you can. And only just lightly, single, quick sprays. You do not want to saturate your sheet. Okay. That will fix your pastels to stick on there. But like I said, when you painted, when you used it as a paint, it activated the binding agents that are already in this. So if you look, that doesn't really rub off, okay? It can. I mean, if you really go at it, you're going to rub it off. But you can just use aerosol hairspray. Do it from a far away as you can and just random little tiny spurts because you do not want to saturate it. If you saturate it, it's going to take the vibrance away from your colors. Okay, that's just my experience. I probably should have Googled it and found out what people are doing these days, but I didn't. <laughs> I'll own it. I, did, I, I really didn't even look into it because I just don't do it that often. Most of my art done with pastels is on a small scale, so a little bit of hairspray and we're good. So let's set her on the rock. Okay, and then I just used the new, um, okay, what color is it? Uh, I lost the name on your left. Misty Moonlight. And I wanted something that would pull out some of the lighter parts of the ocean there is all. And I'm going to go ahead and pop this one up. I'm not sure why, but I just felt I should. And I would do the same thing as far as a greeting. I would use um, your vellum paper and whatever greeting you want to do on it. two of them there. Sorry, my hand my hand gives out doing this much. That's all right. I'm really having a good time since these pastels arrived the other day. And I, I didn't see any videos out there on how to use them through Stampin' Up! So I thought, eh, I'll try to put something together. And there we go. You have your little mermaid watching the fireworks. And all I did, like I said, is I did it on vellum. Put a real small amount of dimensional behind the name so you don't see it as much. But what I would do, I used my white dimensional there. I would say use your black dimensionals. Your mini blacks and put them behind there because then it's not going to show. I messed up, didn't think about it, but there you go. There's our two cards. You had a couple different techniques in there. Where's the other card? What did we do with it? What did we do with it? Here's your sunset card. 
And those are just a few different ways you can use these pastels. Give them a try. They're inexpensive. They're fun to play with. You can use them to paint. I will continue to do a couple more videos showing some different... Um, I showed you all of these different ways you can use these pastels yesterday. I'm going to do some more cards using these different techniques to help you out. I mean, you want to enjoy them, so you kind of have to know how to use them. Well, there you go. I hope you enjoyed this and you have a happy stamping day. I will put links below to all the supplies used. And I also include the link to yesterday's in case you missed it. I hope you have a happy stamping day. Bye-bye now.